Well then, you better understand one thing here. Go on, tell me. Next time you ignore to do your chores, then we will get a divorce. Oh my! You'd be in trouble if we get a divorce, right? You have no other family and you're a loner, right? I have no other family and I'm a loner, huh? I see how it is. My husband, Fred, placed the divorce papers on the table in front of me confidently. Oh, so it is all filled out. Wow, it's true. Our kids looked at each other and instantly began to take action. Huh? Our kids snatched the divorce papers in their hands quickly. You want to divorce me, right? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. If you're going to skip and ignore to do any house chores, I'm divorcing you. Fine. Huh? Let's get a divorce. My name is Judy. I've been married to my husband Fred for 25 years. We have been blessed with two children. To say that my husband is an old-fashioned person sounds too good to be true. He is a quiet man who supports his family as the main breadwinner of the family. But actually, he's the type of person who nags and forces me to go to work. And he is also the type of person who also makes me take care of everything about the house, including doing all the house chores. Fortunately, before marrying Fred, I lived on my own for a long time and worked hard to save money. So it was not really hard for me to take care of the house. And above all, I thoroughly devoted myself to housework for the sake of our children, Jack and John. Thanks to my efforts, both Jack and John grew up to be successful adults. And last year, the younger one, John, left home to live on his own. I was a stay-at-home mom until both of our kids reached middle school. The reason for this being that it was simply because Fred wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom. After graduating from university, I worked at a publishing company for a long time, but when I was in my 20s, both my parents passed away one after the other. Losing both of my parents and as an only child, I had no other families and I was left all alone in this world. If my parents had any siblings, we might have had a chance to get to know each other as a family. But both of them didn't have any sisters or brothers, and both of my grandparents also had passed away. I was really all alone. And that was when I met my husband. He came in as I was smoking a cigarette in the smoking room, and he began to refill the vending machines for drinks. Then, seeing me, he approached me with a bottle of drink. This is a new product that our company will come up with at the end of the month. If you wouldn't mind it, would you like to try it? Oh, thank you very much, I will. This was how we first met, and that was how our first conversation went. But, after meeting several times, we became pretty close, and this developed into a relationship. And then, I learned that he had a dream. When I heard about his dream, I felt that I really wanted to support him from the bottom of my heart. His dream was to become a novelist. I had the opportunity to read one of the work he had written, and I thought that it was quite good for his first novel. Since I worked in a publishing company, I told him that I would talk to his editor about possibility of publishing his work, but he stubbornly refused. As I thought that him thinking that was a waste, I felt he had great talent, and I became more and more attracted to him. And over time, we got married, and 25 years have passed since then. However, he never made it big as a novelist. I found out that what he had written was actually written by a friend of my husband's. I found out about that when my younger son was just five years old. 
I heard about the novel, which was published from another publishing company, because it was getting popular. So I read it to know what the hype was, and found that it was exactly the same as the one my husband had shown me. At that time, I finally understood that my husband had tricked me about it. If this was all true, I would have accused him of plagiarism, but I didn't. I would never do that because, actually, Fred had never written a novel since we got married. I could immediately feel and determine that Fred had plagiarized the work. But by this time, our kids had already been born. And my husband, for some reason, kept me from becoming a publisher and made me quit my work at the publishing company. But I decided to turn a blind eye to that, as long as our kids would grow up with no problem. I am beyond grateful that my husband and I got married and that we were able to have kids. But to be honest, this marriage has been a difficult one for me. My husband basically forced me to quit my job and made me become a full time housewife. But he is the one who still controls the family finance. So, my husband gives me the money for living expenses, but. For the past 25 years, I have received only $500 a month for living expenses. Saving money is not hard. But it would be impossible to cover food and utilities for a family of four with only that amount. I have tried several times to negotiate with Fred about it, but he insists that he can't give me more than the amount he's been giving me and couldn't get anywhere with the negotiation. So I began to use my savings I made before I married Fred and used it mainly on our kids. I got vegetables that were on sale and meat that were half priced in grocery stores for Fred's meals only, and cooked meals for him with those ingredients as a way of showing how I would oppose to his arguments. Once I got the cheap ingredients from the grocery stores, I would put them immediately into the freezer. I am sure that the quality and the taste wouldn't be that good as compared to the normal ones, but. Once I do that, I would feel much more at ease. Of course, I made sure that our kids ate well. The savings I have before I married Fred were for our kids. But the $300,000 that I had as my savings were gone as soon as my younger son graduated from college. I am truly relieved that I was able to spend my savings without our kids. Having to feel that it was never enough for them. I think my husband was really selfish. He had forced me to quit my job and focus on house chores. But when the kids started middle school, he insisted that I work. But I was reluctant to do so. It wasn't because I didn't want to work, I actually did want to work. But it was because I couldn't forgive my husband's selfishness at all. I knew that if I started working here, he would stop providing any of his money for the family. He would spend the money he earned on whatever he wanted to do with it as if it was all for his own. I just couldn't allow Fred to do that. But when my husband saw me reluctant about his suggestion, He began to say such horrible things like removing me from his support system. I truly hated the fact that he was so selfish. But it turned out to be actually a good thing for me. Now that I'm off his support system, no matter how much money I earn from my work, Fred will never know how much I'd earn. And my husband goes to work early in the morning. And doesn't come home until late at night. Even if I start working, he will probably never find out. And in the end, he still never found out that I was actually working. And I think it kind of helped that my husband was a man who only cared about himself. He was also oblivious about things like pension and so on. 
If he wasn't so oblivious, then he'd know that there was no way we could afford it all just with $500. Now that both our kids left our home, now it was my time to spend time and live my life with my husband. But I couldn't imagine such future with Fred. So I had thought of getting a divorce with my husband once the kids were married. But just as I was thinking about that, I got hospitalized. It all started when I went to the hospital for an annual medical checkup. The name of the disease was uterine fibroid, and the doctor told me that I would have to have my uterus removed completely. It was quite a shock to hear that, but there was no other way. I still wanted to watch my kids grow up, and there were still some things that I wanted to do. After consulting with the doctor and the kids, I agreed to have it removed. From next week for five days, I'll be gone. I informed Fred while I served him his dinner. Huh? What are you saying? I'm getting a surgery. Yeah, but why for five days? What about money? How much does it cost? It's all about money again. My husband was worried about money instead of me getting the surgery. Don't you worry about the surgery fee. I'll pay with the savings I made this whole time. What? You have secret savings and you didn't tell me about it? So much for using my money, huh? I guess giving you $500 per month was too much. From next month, I'll only give you $300. Anyways, I'll be gone from next week. Hmm. You eat all my money up. I am no longer emotionally affected by these horrible words. Over the past 25 years, I was able to learn to ignore some things that Fred says. The day before the surgery, I was admitted to the hospital, and the next day the surgery was held and it was a success. While I was lying in bed, both our sons came running to me. Mom, are you okay? Yes, thank you. I'm fine. But don't you look a little pale? I guess so, but it's because I just woke up from the anesthesia. I'm sorry I worried you. I'm fine, so you can go back to work now. Don't worry, we're both taking a half day off today. Oh really, thank you. Mom, do you want a hamburger? You must be hungry, right? Oh my, you got it just for me? Thank you. But, you know, I can only eat hospital food after my surgery. I'll just take it as a courtesy. Both of our sons worked hard and stay with me until just before visiting hours were finished. They really both have grown up to be kind and gentle. But on the third day in the hospital, I received a call from Fred every five minutes. Thinking that maybe something wrong had happened to Fred, I let out a huge sigh. Yes, yes, what is it? You. How long are you going to be out of the house? I'll be out of the hospital in two days. No, I won't allow it. You better come home now. Oh, please, don't be unreasonable. I can't leave the hospital yet. I'm being forced to pay extra living expenses because you're slacking off on your house chores. Oh, really? I'll be collecting $200 from you. $200 for being away from home for just five days? That's quite a wild estimate. Anyways, I'm in a hospital room right now and there are other patients around me, so I'll turn off my phone. I'll be back home in two days. Hey! This is the moment I realized once again what a noisy and inconsiderate person Fred is. I want to praise myself for having spent 25 years with this person. Well, I only have to hold on a little longer. I will be free once my kids get married. But first, let's have him give me back my little freedom back. When I returned home after leaving the hospital, my husband was waiting for me at home even though it was weekday. Oh, you're here. But I knew that this would happen. My husband had taken time off from work just to blame me for everything I haven't been doing. Hey, you sit here. 
Please wait a moment. I'll wash my hands now. I don't care about that. Hurry up and sit down. No, I don't want to. If I get an infection from this, I'll have to blame you. My husband then waits for me while tapping his foot nonstop. Well then, thank you for waiting. Two hundred dollars. Ah, yes, yes, that's right. Here you go. My husband snatched the money out from my hand. What a crude person he is. Tell me how you're reflecting about what you had done this time. Reflecting? Hmm, well, I can't say that this is all due to ignoring about my health. And it's really hard to say that food had anything to do with it. If I had to say this, then I'd say that it was destined to happen. Uh, what are you talking about? Yes, um, I'm just saying that I've been reflecting about this illness I had. That's not what I meant! Oh, well, what else should I be sorry for? I was talking about how you skipped out on your house chores. Oh, that. Um, well, wait a minute. I think they should be home soon. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about our kids. Huh? Why are they coming back here? I asked them to because I wanted them to see what was going on this time. And it's pretty important, you know. Then Fred began to grin. In my husband's mind, he probably thought that he can show off about what a father is like to the kids after a long time. People who only sees themselves and are just too selfish are easy to deal with because their actions are so simple and easy to read. Ten minutes later, both of our sons arrived, and our conversation resumed. You seem awfully excited. Well, I'll listen if you want to talk first. Listen up, boys. Don't ever get a wife like your mother here. You'll just have a hard time. A hard time? Like what? Like how you are right now. You oppose against me every single time. I just want to know how you're feeling and what you're thinking about. If we are a couple, then it is only natural that we want to know about each other. Well then, you better understand one thing here. Go on, tell me. Next time you ignore to do your chores, then we will get a divorce. Oh my! You'd be in trouble if we get a divorce, right? You have no other family and you're a loner, right? I have no other family and I'm a loner, huh? I see how it is. My husband, Fred, placed the divorce papers on the table in front of me confidently. Oh, so it is all filled out. Whoa, it's true. Our kids looked at each other and instantly began to take action. Huh? Our kids snatched the divorce papers in their hands quickly. You want to divorce me, right? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. If you're going to skip and ignore to do any house chores, I'm divorcing you. Fine. Huh? Let's get a divorce. The reason I had the kids come over today was to discuss about divorcing you. I was going to wait until the kids were married before divorcing you, but... You seem to want a divorce now, and look at the kids' faces. They seem to agree with the divorce too, so I will file these divorce papers. No, uh, wait a minute. How are you, a housewife, going to live all on your own after divorcing me? Don't pretend to act so strong. Do you really think that just $500 a month will cover the pension, tax, insurance, and all that, plus food and utilities? It's impossible! I've been working since the day when you removed me from your support system. Oh, don't worry. I have no intention of receiving any property from you with your small salary. The fact that you gave me these divorce papers is enough as a gift from you. Well then, I'll pick up my belongings on another day. Hey, wait! What kind of work are you doing? I'm an editor. One of the author I'm in charge of is the author of a piece that you plagiarized. Well then, please take care. Wait a minute. 
My husband tried desperately to snatch the divorce papers away, but my kids' defenses were much more stronger. My second son tackled him and we were able to leave the house without any problems. And my divorce was successfully finalized. But my ex-husband was a man who was obsessed with money until the end. When he found out that I earned more than he did, he insisted on sharing common property. Well, it was what I had expected anyways. He destroyed my last act of mercy with his own hands. I hired a lawyer and told my ex-husband that I was suing him for financial abuse and moral harassment. He flatly denied that this was all true, but when I provided him with the family financial book which had a record of the whole 25 years, he caved in easily. He desperately pleaded me to spare him only a trial, but there was no need to listen to him. I sued him without mercy. The result was an overwhelming victory. He had been spending his hard-earned money on other things and so, he could not afford a decent lawyer and the case was settled almost entirely on our terms. In the end, he ended up having to pay me $20,000 as alimony without getting any of the common property. If he had quietly backed down, there would have been no consequences. I felt as if my 25 years had been paid off just with $20,000 but basically, I have absolutely no regrets about marrying him. In fact, I am more grateful. It is because of him that I was able to meet such wonderful kids. After the divorce, my ex-husband seems to be in frequent contact with the kids, but they would tell me that they will never see him again. That's true, my ex-husband has never cooperated with the kids in any way. I don't think they will ever open up to him even if he comes on to them now. He contacted me once, but after court, I never had anything to do with him again. I didn't answer the call and I rejected it. What I am looking forward to now is that my kids are getting married and having grandchildren. I will save my money so that I can do all kinds of things for my grandchildren. This is exactly what you would call a satisfying middle-aged divorce. I fully respect Judy's enduring attitude. I hope you will be able to live a stress-free life from now on. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Alright then, well, I'm gonna go to the trip with my mom. You stay at home, okay? Huh? I was completely speechless. But this is the prize which I won at the contest, you know? Besides... Besides, if the winner doesn't use the ticket, then that ticket would be invalid. I tried to say that, but my husband, Mike, says something so outrageous over what I was trying to say. If you don't like it, then we'll get a divorce. Excuse me? I'm saying that if you can't obey with what I'm saying, then we'll get a divorce. My affectionate feelings that I had for my husband instantly cooled down with these words. My name is Sasha and I am a 30-year-old office worker. I went to an all-girls school from middle school until university and entered the society without ever having had a proper conversation with a man. And my work was so busy that I didn't have time to fall in love at all and before I knew it, I was 25 years old. I thought this was a bad idea, so a friend of mine took the initiative and set up a blind date for me. And then, I had my first boyfriend, who was a freelancer, but lied about being an office worker, and also became unemployed after we started to date. I realized that he was going to completely depend on me and live off of me, so I broke up with him as soon as I could. Because my first boyfriend was such a person like that, I became even more of averse to men and couldn't trust men that easily. Therefore, I finally reached the age of 30 without having any boyfriend at all. My parents were even more worried about me than I was. Both my father and mother had already been married for several years when they were my age. So, they were feeling quite impatient as well. Nowadays, 
It is not too late to get married in 30s. But back then, the latest age a person could get married was around 25 years old. So, my father brought several offers of arranged marriages to me, saying that if I didn't have any boyfriend or partner, he would find one for me. At first, I turned them all down several times, but gradually, I felt bad about continuing to turn down the offers that my father would bring me. Besides, I felt with my own skin that both my father and mother wished me, their only daughter, to be happy. That's why I decided to take it positive and go on a blind date to show my parents that I am also grateful of them. That is when I met Mike, who later became my current husband. Mike is 30 years old, and he was the same age as me. He too had attended a boys' school all his life and had never had a chance to fall in love with a girl. What I liked about him was that he was very protective of his parents and took very good care of them. Even after he became an adult, he regularly visits his parents' house, gifts them trips, and goes on trips with them. He seems to have a good personality and works properly in a company. I've gotten his business card and I've made sure of it. I was very cautious because I had made a mistake with my previous boyfriend. Even though I was being cautious and checking carefully, there seemed to be nothing strange about Mike. I'm sure he's fine. That's what I thought to myself. And the two of us continued to date. He took the lead, as I was shy, and took very good care of me. I became more and more attracted to him. After two years of dating, Mike proposed to me and we got married. My parents were crying and was being very happy when they heard that I was finally getting married. I truly felt that not only had I met a good man, but I was also very happy to have been able to take care of my parents like this. And after the wedding ceremony, we went on our honeymoon and started our life happily as a husband and wife. Since my husband and I were both working, we shared the housework. My husband is not a good cook, so I did the cooking, and he did the laundry and cleaning. We got along well as a couple, and I think we had a happy married life supporting each other. But after just one year of marriage, things changed. It all started when my father-in-law passed away due to an illness. After that, my husband began to care excessively about my mother-in-law, Bianca, who was left all alone. On Mike's days off, he would go to his parents-in-law's house to visit Bianca, and he and Bianca would sometimes go out together on their own. Sometimes, he drops by Bianca's house after work and eats dinner on his own with her. And sometimes, he would go on a trip with just Bianca. I saw my husband leaving on the morning of the trip with his travel bag and I had asked him cluelessly if he was going on a business trip. But to that, he would say, No, I'm traveling with my mother to New York. I was really surprised to hear that at that time. First of all, I just couldn't believe that he was going to go on a trip without letting me know about it and then to keep quiet about it. If I hadn't asked, he wasn't going to tell me, huh? No matter how much you care about your own mother, can you really disrespect your own wife like that? That's how I felt. It's not that he totally ignores me, but to this extent, I think he has gone beyond being family-oriented to being a mama's boy. But even so, my husband does not seem to want to change his attitude or lifestyle. In fact, I don't think he even thinks how he's acting is wrong. In any case, I decided to compromise and spend my time with him for the time being, thinking that this was how he was. If we divorced after only one year of marriage, I would really feel bad for my parents, and if we had a child, my husband's attitude might change again. It's not right to divorce so easily. 
I spent my days thinking like that. I also decided to take up a hobby of my own and have recently become addicted to entering in contests to get prizes. I have been entering various contests, getting prizes, and writing reviews, which is surprisingly fun. And if I keep at it, I often win prizes like cosmetics and food. And then, on one of the contests I entered in, I won a pair of airline tickets to Guam. I was so surprised that I had to reread my email about three times because I had never won such a big prize before. I checked the contents of the email thoroughly just to make sure that it wasn't a fraud. It didn't seem to take me to any suspicious links, nor did it ask me for my credit card number or anything like that. So that means that I really won the Guam trip. It seems that I have to contact the airline in advance to redeem the travel tickets. Who should I go with? My husband just recently went on a trip to New York with Bianca. Shall I ask my friends or my parents? Ah, yes! I thought to myself, and I decided to give this travel tickets to my parents for them to enjoy the trip. Then, I went to my parents' house and informed them about it. Well, it's been years since we traveled abroad. Are you sure about this? This is something that you won, Sasha. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. Let me at least spoil you guys once in a while. All right, well, thank you. I'm glad to see my parents be happy like that. I thought so, but... Hmm? Huh? What's wrong, Dad? This ticket is valid only for the person who won the tickets and is non-transferable and you're not allowed to sell it, is what it says here. What? Does that mean I can't give this as a gift to you both? Yeah, it seems so. Oh man. <laughs> ah well, it can't be helped. Well, you did win it, honey. So why don't you go with Mike? Since my parents said so, I finally decided that I'd go with my husband. And when I came home from my parents' house that night, I found a woman's coat by the front door. This coat looked familiar. Yes, it was Bianca's coat. When I went to the living room, I saw Bianca watching the TV. Oh, Sasha, did you just get home? It's your day off, so what were you doing out so late at night? Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea that you came here, Bianca. Oh, what are you trying to say? Is it wrong of me to come to my son's house? No, it's not. I think Bianca was a little kinder to me when my father-in-law was still alive. But ever since he passed away, she has been very strict and cold to me. Oh, what's this? What did you buy? Bianca seemed to have noticed the bag I had on my arm. In the bag was a guidebook for a trip to Guam that I bought on my way home. Oh, this is nothing. Just show it to me. Huh, why? Just show it! And saying that, Bianca forcibly took the bag from me. Huh? Guam? Are you just trying to treat yourself? What are you doing with Mike's earnings? Huh? What the hell is she saying? I've never ever depended on Mike's earning like this before. I won a pair of travel tickets in a contest, so I thought I would go on the trip with my husband. Oh, really? Is that so? Wow, a prize, huh? Bianca suddenly changed her mood and got excited. I have a bad feeling about this. Then, my husband came into the living room. Apparently, he was taking a bath. Oh, Sasha, welcome back. I mean, what's wrong? I heard my mother's happy voice all the way from the bath. Oh, Mikey, listen. Sasha won a trip to Guam in a contest. Wow, that's great. Uh, y yeah. So, I decided to go with you, Mike, and I bought a guidebook for that, too. How many people can go on that trip? It's a pair of travel tickets, so it would just be the two of us. 
My husband fell silent for a bit and looked over at Bianca's face. Bianca seems to suck up to my husband, showing her eyes widely like a dog waiting to be fed. Okay, well then, I'm gonna go to the trip with my mom. You stay at home, okay? Huh? I was just completely speechless. I had no idea that Mike was this much of a mama's boy. This is what I won from the contest, you know? So what? We're a couple, so what's yours is mine, right? And what's mine is my mom's. No, what kind of logic does he have? Uh, no way. Besides, you and Bianca just went on a trip just a few weeks ago. This and that has nothing to do with each other. Yes, that's right. Mike paid for that one, and besides, it was a domestic trip. I haven't been on an overseas trip in years. Wow, I'm so excited. She's already planning to go, huh? Hey, I didn't even agree to the fact that you both will be the ones going to the trip, you know? Besides, besides, that ticket would be invalid if the winner won't be there. I was about to say so, but my husband says something outrageous, trying not to hear what I was about to say. If you don't like it, then we'll get a divorce. Excuse me? I said, if you can't listen and obey to what I say, then we'll get a divorce. I never thought he would say that. With these words, my affectionate feelings toward my husband instantly cooled down. I understand how it is. Do whatever you want. Then why didn't you just say so quickly? You're just so selfish. Both Mike and Bianca looked victorious, as if they had won a huge fight. Then, while reading the guidebook they had taken from me, they began to happily plan out their travel plans together. And I was beginning to think about my post-divorce plans. Later on, my husband told me to make sure I contacted the airline, so I did as I was told. But it was just a confirmation. Um, I'm not allowed to give away these tickets to your own husband or other relatives even if I can't go, right? When I asked that, the operator replied, I'm sorry, but you're not allowed to give away the tickets even to your family or your relatives. Well, of course, that makes sense. Hearing that, I told the operator, Well then, I would like to decline the airline tickets that I won in the contest, and hung up the phone. Then I told my husband, I call for you and here are the terms and conditions in the tickets, so please check the details. Then my husband scoffed as he said, I don't have to read the terms and conditions, and left the tickets on the shelf. It probably would never have occurred to him that those tickets were invalid. I reported this incident to my parents. I asked them to help me because I wanted to make the day of Mike and Bianca's trip the day I moved out from the house. After hearing what had happened, my father was shocked and said, I never thought that Mike was such a person like that. I mean, it was my father who brought up the idea of the arranged marriage with Mike, so that's why he was more shocked. It's not your fault, Dad. He just started to show who he really was recently, you know? I made my father try not to worry that it was his fault and calmed him down. On the day of the trip, my husband was in a great mood and was getting ready to leave. I was also looking forward to seeing how he and Bianca would react at the airport. Well, I'm off then. Take care of the house while I'm gone. Mike says so with a huge grin on his face. Yeah, have fun! My husband looked a little surprised as I saw him off with a huge smile on my face. Then, right after my husband left, my parents arrived to the house. They carried my belongings into the car and we went over to the new place I was going to move into. I had actually started looking for a room the moment I became fed up with my husband. I found a nice apartment near my office and decided to move into it immediately. I moved my belongings and got a comfortable and quiet room. About two hours later, my husband called me. Hello? Oh, hey, what's going on? 
They said that our airline tickets are invalid. Well, yes, that's right. If the winner doesn't accompany, then the tickets are invalid. Huh? I didn't hear anything about that. I told you, didn't I? I told you to check the terms and condition. It's all written right there. Y you've got to be kidding me. I wouldn't even read that. Well then, that's just your fault for not reading it, right? It's the same as someone who gets sued and says they didn't know anything about the law. Th then wh what am I supposed to do? I already got a hotel in Guam. They told me I'd have to pay for our own ticket fees. Like I said, it's none of my business anymore, so you and Bianca should just take care of it. I said that and hang up the phone. Then ten minutes later, my husband called again. What now? Hey, why can't I pay with your card? Huh? My card? What do you mean? The card that you're using as a sub. With panic, I checked the drawers and found out that my card, which I had been using as a sub, was gone. You took the card without my permission? I was only borrowing it for a little while. But I was told by the airline staff that I can't use this card. What the hell is going on? Are you stupid? If you're not the owner of the card, you can't use it. Th that's... but in the internet... Huh? Internet? Oh, uh, no. And he hanged up the phone. No way. I immediately checked my credit card statement for the credit card I used as a sub, and I found a list of unknown statement that I had no recollection of using it. Then I remembered that my husband had been buying a lot of clothes and other things recently. He must have used my card to get those without my permission. I immediately stopped the card and I took a screenshot of the statement history. With this, I will definitely charge him later. A few days later, I received a call from my husband after his three days and two nights trip to Guam. Hey, what is the meaning of this? I don't see any of your stuff and belongings in our house anymore. And you left the divorce papers on the table. What the hell are you thinking? Well, I mean what I mean. I can't go on living with a mama's boy like you who prioritizes his own mother and ignores his own wife, and to a thief like you using my credit card without any permission. What? If you won't sign the divorce papers, then let's fight over court. C court Oh, are you in trouble? If people at work find out about this... I see, then I'll request my divorce through my lawyer, so you better quietly obey to the request. No, no way. My husband reluctantly accepted the terms and agreed to the divorce. He agreed to divorce me on the condition that there would be no division of property and that he would also pay me for the credit card bills he used without my permission. But my revenge does not end there. I wouldn't say anything about what had happened, but I didn't know what my father, who had brought this marriage proposal to me, would do or say. And sure enough, my ex-husband called me. Hey, this is not what we agreed on. Everyone at work knows about what happened. Now, they talk about me behind my back and I'm known as a mama's boy and a thief. And now, I can't walk with my head held high in my company. Oh, what a pity. But I didn't say anything about any of this, you know. Did you forget that so many people were involved in our marriage? Oh. Yes, this marriage was set up through a connection between my father, who is a general manager of the department in a company, and my ex-husband's boss, who is a department head in his company. My father and my ex-husband's boss were great friends, and our blind date was set up from the fact that my ex-husband's boss had a good bachelor staff who was working under him. So this means that, hearing what had happened, my ex-husband's boss was very angry with my ex-husband over this matter. It seems like Mike has been removed from the career track and is being looked at coldly by all the employees around him. As for Bianca, it seems that this incident was leaked out to her neighbors and all the neighbors has started to avoid her too, 
so she now shuts herself inside the house. Well, they both got what they deserved, so I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. As for me, I put in a lot of effort at work and got a promotion. I got a raise in salary too, so to celebrate, I took my parents on an overseas trip. We went to Italy, which we all had wanted to go to for a long time, and made good memories as a family. A lot had happened this time, but I would like to use it as food for thought to find a good man and find a better love next time. I am surprised that he was not only a mama's boy, but also a thief. If it comes to that point, there is nothing anyone can do for him anymore. I'm glad Sasha's family got along well and finally got to go on a family vacation to Italy. I hope Sasha, who is kind and family oriented, will find someone better and wonderful. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.